Just 20 more weekends until Michigan State football kicks off. What is there to be excited about? Well, we got 20 things to talk about. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on. College terms and conditions apply. Spartan friends, Spartan family, locked on Spartans listeners. Hope you enjoyed that new intro. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening to the podcast, we'll work on that. You know, it's been a lot of the same music here, but we're going to try to usher in this new era of locked on Spartans here for our audio listeners. Nevertheless... If you're watching, if you're listening, thank you all so much, regardless if you're chewing up some of your weekend with us here, if you're starting your week with us here at Locked on Spartans, cannot extend any more gratitude. So let's get into the show here, because right now, as we're sitting down recording, Sunday, April 14th, that means yesterday was 20 weeks until kickoff against Florida Atlantic to get this season started for Michigan State. So, hey, easy premise. We have 20 things to get fired up about. We also reached out to some of you fine folks on Twitter. We're going to save that for the third segment. But first and foremost, number one, guys, it's easy. Might even be cheesy, but it's true. It's just newfound optimism. All right. Someone on Twitter actually pretty much said it best. This comes from Be Easy. The hope that we might possibly not suck completely is what's getting them fired up for this season. Uh, guys, last year, was a brutal season. We're not going to rehash every single game, every single play, all the meltdowns, all the off the field stuff, but <laughs> there's a reason um, that liquor sales were probably up in East Lansing last year. That was no fun. Uh, truly no fun. In seven of the games, Michigan St State scored a touchdown on offense or less in seven games. So yeah, they weren't just blowouts, but it was a sluggish to look at. So out with the old regime, in with the new regime. This seems more structured. This seems more organized. And it's just a breath of fresh air that was desperately needed here in East Lansing. So, folks, number two is not just, hey, optimism, because we like what's going on this offseason. I love the Jonathan Smith hire. A lot of you fine folks out there love the Jonathan Smith hire, too. But number two is this means a fresh chapter. Okay, a new era beginning with new leadership at the helm, and we are kind of hearkening back to the days of Mark D'Antonio, where for a few reasons, one, off the field, as far as recruiting goes, it's not going to be the Ferraris, the Lamborghinis, the private jets on the field, which I, I still think was a good idea, but that's a different discussion. We're going back to more okay, regional recruiting first. We want to hit that four-hour driving radius around East Lansing first, and then, of course, there's going to be national aspects to it, but... Above all, do you have a fit with what we're trying to do here under Jonathan Smith, Brian Lindgren, Joe Rossi, and we're also going to focus on, get ready for this, guys. This is something we've seen in the last few years, development of players. So that will be nice. Also, too, just stylistically on the field, Jonathan Smith has been very vocal about this, even back to his days at Oregon State. It's all about the run game. All right, so, hey, we're going to get back to prioritizing the run game. We're going to get something called – an identity here probably in East Lansing because that's something that was lacking here the last few years. You never really understood what you were supposed to be watching on any given Saturday. So Jonathan Smith, he wants physical football. He wants the run game established first. And on defense, guys, this, this falls under the fresh start here. Joe Rossi introducing a new scheme on defense. My God, we need this more than we need air and water uh, because that was a long – three or four years here uh, in East Lansing. So, and Matt P also writes in, this is another one from Twitter. I read up on the rule book and there's something called a touchdown. I think Jonathan Smith is crazy enough to try out. That'd be cool. Yeah, that, that'd be a little nice. Not just, you know, falling in last place or close to last place uh, in scoring amongst any national team. So number three, reason to be excited about this upcoming season. Yeah, we're going to just get to them right now. It's Aiden Childs. Okay, it's the quarterback that transferred from Oregon State. 24-7 sports had him so highly regarded, they ranked him as the number one quarterback transfer in the nation this offseason. Now, last year, just 35 pass attempts 
right? That's not a lot. There's not a whole just, you know, list of examples or a lot of clips out there that you could pull and get a heavy sample size. But let's not let that get in the way of a good narrative here. Now, last year, he had a QBR of 85.7. If you extended his season, if he kept up that same QBR, that would have ranked seventh amongst all quarterbacks last year. And guys, I know that there aren't a lot of clips. There aren't a lot of highlights out there. But the ones that you do see, excuse us for getting pretty fired off about Aiden Childs. The guy can throw the ball 20-yard line to 20-yard line. He can have scrambling ability. We haven't had a true dual threat quarterback in East Lansing since oh, Lord knows how long. I guess Brian Lewerke, if you want to call him a dual threat, I, I tend to think he was, but there are some people that even don't consider him a true dual threat. So if not for nothing else, even if he doesn't win the Heisman in his first year, because these are sky high expectations, at the very least, guys, it's just going to be exciting to watch. It's just going to be fun football to watch because the offense was anemic last year. A dual threat quarterback can take you far in the college game. So it's nice that he comes over with Jonathan Smith, Brian Lindgren. Yes, he's a transfer quarterback. It's not the same situation at all where he's learning a new system in the offseason and might be slow off the blocks. Everything is so familiar with him already, and that can only give us optimism. Number four, we're going to switch sides of the ball here. We're going to go to defense, the upgrades at linebacker. I'm going to start with one of the transfers here out of Old Dominion, Wayne Matthews. Okay, you might be wondering why are we talking about an Old Dominion transfer? That seems kind of random. But last year, one of the many things Michigan State lacked in defensively was pass coverage at the linebacker position. Okay, there was a lot of spots Michigan State got picked apart in. But you can always count on the other team's tight end to have a field day because, well, let's just pick out the linebacker we're matched up against. Let's run a little flag route or some hitch routes, and we're just going to burn and turn the entire game. All right, Wayne Matthews, one of the best coverage linebackers in the transfer portal. You got him in. You also got another transfer in, Jordan Turner, an experienced guy, a guy that Joe Rossi said he's very familiar with, especially coaching against him in the Big Ten West for as long as he was there. Jordan Hall returns. Okay, but then you still have older guys that we already know, like Cal Halliday. Can he fit into the mix? Darius Snow, yes, his leg nearly exploded two years ago, and he's still working back up. But how high up can he get? Nevertheless, that's experience in the linebacker room. That's a guy that you want around these younger kids. So linebacker, which looked to be somewhat of a weakness last year, especially as the injury to Jacoby Winman happened that early as it did. There's optimism that the linebacker does get a little better. Now, number five is a position that we are just, just not concerned about if they're going to be good. Like You could already pencil this in, barring any catastrophic injuries, that the defensive front is going to be strong, namely the tackles. Okay, we're talking Simeon Barrow, a guy that dipped his toe in the transfer portal for about five seconds. Derek Harmon, a guy that not only got into the transfer portal, but heard from Ohio State. Oregon, Auburn. Okay, this was a hot name in the transfer portal streets. He comes back to East Lansing, and by all indications, from the whispers or borderline shouts that I'm hearing out of spring practice so far, is that Derek Harmon is even better than he was at the end of last year. You also have Maverick Hansen returning for what seems to be his 19th year. You went ahead and you got a massive transfer from the portal into Quan Douse, the 13th best defensive tackle in the ACC last season as he comes in from Georgia Tech. So, hey, stopping the run is paramount in the Big Ten. You need some big beef up there. And, hey, it doesn't hurt that these guys can also rush the passer from the inside a little bit too. Number six. I mean, this is kind of a question. This is just kind of a storyline going into the season. But that rush, edge, position, I'm very excited to see who is going to step up there. When they take the field against the Owls here in now less than 20 weeks, who's it going to be at defensive end? Because, hey, speaking of what we're hearing out of spring camp, Chris Bogle. Having a really strong spring camp so far. All right, Jalen Thompson is a true freshman. He ended last year getting considerable reps, making them count. We're hearing great things about him out of camp. But then you also have young guys like By Job, Andrew DePape, Avery Dunn, one of the older guys out there. So this isn't me saying like, oh, this is for sure going to be a dynamite position. But it's a different look defensively. Chris Bogle actually spoke to the media last week and said how stiff the defense kind of was last year. That was a very 
nice way of putting uh, it for him. But, hey, so it's a new defensive scheme, and also the young talent is growing. We're excited to see how that's going to unfold here in a little bit. And speaking of young talent now getting old, we're going to start next segment with that. But first, I just need to talk your ears off about LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to go check out LinkedIn Jobs. Now, LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and, my favorite part, for free. Now, LinkedIn isn't just another job board. They help you find professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to that perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking at LinkedIn jobs, well, you're just looking in the wrong place and you're wasting your sweet time because LinkedIn knows that your time is precious as a small business owner. They know you wear so many hats and you might not have time to resource the hire so put the ball in LinkedIn jobs court. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions got that right. They apply. All right. Now let's keep going on here because, hey, number seven coming up is the safeties. I mean, th these, these are young pups. Just a few years ago, we're talking guys like Jaden Mangum. We're talking guys like Malik Spencer and Dylan Tatum, too, which could be a safety, could be a nickel, could be a corner. Nevertheless, oh, man, I feel like we're getting old now. These guys are upperclassmen. These guys are upperclassmen. And in Rossi's system, you know, he's not a stranger to putting three safety-type guys out on defense. So, yes, it could be. There's a trio of safeties, really, when you think about it, of Jaden Mangum up top, Malik Spencer as a strong safety, and then Tatum just right there in that nickel, kind of almost like a hybrid box safety. But that will be exciting to see because, man, these guys came in, highly recruited. Shout out to Mel Tucker for that. It's not going to be all Mel Tucker slander this show. But as those guys progress, and hopefully they actually do get developmental coaching this offseason under Blue Adams, under Joe Rossi, that would be quite the change here, uh, that – is something to look forward to for this fall. Now, number eight, tight end depth. Guys, just tight end on the surface is something that we haven't seen here in a very long time. It is often thrown around on this show, on other shows, on message boards, on Twitter, just in conversations with your friends and family that, dang, doesn't it seem like it's been since 2015 with Josiah Price reeling in catches that it's been that long since we've had a really strong tight end room here in East Lansing? And sure, you know, we've had some strong tight ends in between here. You know, your Matt Sieberts, your Matt Sokols of the world, your Tyler Hunts, uh, the punter converted into a tight end. But we're talking bonafide, like hopefully upper tier talent for the Big Ten. Guys like Jack Belling, who came with Brian Lindgren, Jonathan Smith, Aiden Childs from Oregon State. You've heard me say it a hundred times in this show, led the nation in tight end touchdowns last year. Now, we will say... He was wide open on a lot of these touchdowns. He was schemed open, but it's familiarity with this staff. It's familiarity with the quarterback and also an offensive coordinator that knows how to use tight ends. And some more recruiting bonuses that we got from the Mel Tucker era came from the tight end room. Guys like Michael Masunas, okay, guy from the West Coast, blocking tight end, can also catch the ball, and then just a straight certified athlete from the state of Michigan, Brennan. Paracheck out of Dexter. He is looking for a big upcoming season. And hey, you know what's better than one good pass catching tight end in the red zone in Jack Valley? How about two? I would not be shocked to see Brennan Paracheck reel in a good amount of catches this season. Yes, he might be tight end two, maybe tight end three, but with an athlete like that, range like he has, that's going to be a friendly target for one Aiden Childs. And also Tyneel Hopper potentially coming back for his 14th year of college, it seems like. So more experience in the room. Number nine. Now, this might be one of the hotter takes that we have here on Lockdown Spartans, but I am high on the running backs. And no, I'm not going to put them in the category of Kenneth Walker, okay? like I, Let's pump the brakes here just a little bit. But I think that this can be a plus running back room. Didn't get to see it last year because – Overwhelming injuries almost right off the bat. Jaron Mangum was sidelined pretty much the whole season. Jalen Berger sidelined for a good chunk of the season. So it was just Nate Carter fighting for his life behind an offensive line. It was kind of underwhelming last year, needless to say. So, again, a lot of this is predicated on offensive line play. 
This is easier said than done. It's going to be hard just in one off season for Coach Maholchek to reverse the offensive line just like that because that is one of the slower positions to develop. But nevertheless, guys, I still think Nate Carter is a plus running back in the Big Ten. You have Jalen Berger just as your backup running back. Okay, you can live with that. And then in the short yardage situations, something we talked about all last offseason with Jaron Mangum, but unfortunately we hardly got to see it because he was hurt so often, is, yeah, that, that could actually help here on third and one. So we're going to talk more about short yard situations here when we talk about your Twitter comments in a hot second. But we want to get to the young pups right now. Number 10, I got one guy written down. It's Nick Marsh. Now, if you saw on Saturday, Michigan State, they posted a nice little cut up on Twitter. It was about a minute long. There was no frame that was longer than two seconds. They didn't want to give many things away. But woo you, saw, uh, you saw Nick Marsh. Reel in a one-handed catch while pass interference was being inflicted upon him. And yes, that's just one highlight, but he wasn't rated a top 150 player in the country for no reason. He's not six foot four of nothing. Like, no, this guy can high point the football. He is already physically built for the college game. And while we're not expecting like a 90 catch season out of him, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility to see him reel in 30, 35, maybe even 40 balls this season. Now, since 2015. There's only been three true freshmen to catch 25-plus catches as a Spartan. That's Donnie Corley, it's Cody White, and Trey Mosley. I expect Nick Marsh to join that company with 25-plus catches because not only is he super talented, but there are reps to be had at that wide receiver position. You have Montori Foster. You have Jerron Glover. But then the third receiver is up for anyone to decide. Could it be Elante Brown, Antonio Gates Jr., or just like we were talking about, true freshman phenom out of Detroit, Nick Marsh. Now, this would be a lousy Big Ten podcast if we did not bring up special teams guys. We're talking guys that are putting the foot on the ball, guys like none other than Ryan Eckley. Now, there were a lot of surprises last season, most of them horrible surprises, like surprises <laughs> that we, we want to know part of, okay? But there were a few very pleasant surprises last season. Ryan Eckley near the top of that list the second best punter in the Big Ten. He booted the ball 46.7 yards per punt. All right, that is only behind the Iowa punter, Tory Taylor, I believe his name is. I'm sorry if I screwed that up, but this young pup, just filling it for Bryce Berenger, we didn't have a lot of expectations for him. We said, you're going to take a steep step back after you let Brian Berenger, or Bryce Berenger, excuse me, walk off to the NFL as he ended his college career. But not, not, not as much of a step back as we thought. And Jonathan Smith has even commented that he is a cannon for a foot so far. And speaking of cannons for feet, well, let's talk about Jonathan Kim. Yep, he's back. Almost, maybe, arguably the most refreshing breath of fresh air from last season. Because a lot of us also remember what happened two years ago and you're missing 26-yard field goals to go to a bowl game. And... <laughs> Every kickoff, or no, I'm sorry, every field goal and every extra point was a roller coaster. But oh, guys, even last year, Jonathan Smith, Jonathan Kim's misses looked nice. Now, last year he was 13 of 18 on field goals, but there is some heavy context to be added to that. All five of his misses were from 40 yards out. Three of those five misses were from 50 yards out. So he just has the like to even attempt those kicks. And if you remember last year, again, guys. Even his misses looked good. They were end over end. They weren't knuckling through the air. That wasn't a slider that he was kicking out there. Like it actually looks like an NFL kicker out there. And there's a reason that the longest made field goal from him last year was 58 yards. And if memory serves correct, that thing probably would have scraped the crossbar from 68 yards. This man has an iron foot. And we learned two years ago and some years before that too. How important field goal kicking can be. Hopefully we get in some spots this year where clutch kicking actually can be the difference between a one game and a loss game. And a made field goal doesn't mean you're just cutting the deficit from 50 points to 47 points against Ohio State. But hey, here is to optimism. Now, number 13. We're going to go with the schedule here. All right. This is a nice little setup for Michigan State, guys. I mean, right off the bat, Florida Atlantic. Maryland, Prairie View, AM, Boston College. You can manage. You can manage a three and one start in that stretch right there. Okay. The middle's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Let's just act like the middle doesn't, 
even show up when you type in uh, all this on the website. It's Ohio State, Oregon, Iowa, Michigan. That'll be tough. But the end of the schedule sets up nicely. Three home games. The three home games are against Indiana, Purdue, Rutgers, and then your only road game in November is Illinois. Not only does that set up for, hey, a bowl game season potentially, I'm not going to get on here saying that <laughs> we're going 11-1 and one with the schedule. Still, even seven and five, six and six is a market step in the right direction. But let's say you're one of those diehard fans that love to travel to road games. Like there are some good options out here. Boston College, I expect Michigan State fans to travel heavily for that one. We are no strangers to rolling deep. Look at the Arizona State game a few years ago. Look at Washington. Look at the Miami game. Boston College will be a cool destination. Or if you want to get your first flavor of Oregon in the Big Ten, you can go over to Austin Stadium, too. So there are a good host of games all over the map, whether they're home games, whether they're road games, or whether they're just games you're looking for Michigan State to win. Schedule sets up nicely, guys. We will be back here in a hot second. First, you talk your ears off about FanDuel. And, yes, guys, college football, lawn over. College basketball, kind of over. But that hasn't stopped FanDuel, America's number one sports book, from giving you the odds on what's going to happen next season. You can go ahead and bet on our Spartans to cut down the nets next year in San Antonio. You can bet on them to win the national championship right now. Or, hey, you know what? If you're like me, you're going to be wanting to chase your master's losses with some baseball betting this year. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That is $150 win or lose. Like I said, you can bet on everything from home runs to slam dunks, slap shots for the NHL and NBA playoffs, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet an automatic win. It's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, now let's go to Twitter because on Saturday, or maybe it was Friday, I don't know, I'm losing track of the days. I went out, I said, hey guys, it's 20 weeks until kickoff. What are you most excited for? And you guys came in great. Some awesome replies. Now, Mr. Detroit, maybe a lot of you, wrote in a new offense, not running shotgun pistol on fourth and one. And Moneybag Ho, that's their name, Moneybag Ho. I'm sure that's a legal name. You can look at their driver's license. Seen something other than a shotgun run for a loss of one on fourth and short. Needless to say, I think a lot of us are in the same boat. We're ready for something different in short yardage situations. And guys, I, I hate to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. That highlight video they dropped on Twitter yesterday. Minute long, very short clips. What we could find there at the end of that highlight reel, someone scoring a touchdown from a short yardage situation. Like, I don't have the stats to look it up, quite frankly. I don't even want to look it up. Let's just assume Michigan State was the worst team in the nation on third and two, fourth and one, third and inches, because, my God, why, why go under center when you could just start, you know, five yards behind the line of scrimmage and do a slow developing zone read? I, I'm just so ready for something different, guys. Oh, <laughs> Oh, my God. The last years have taken years off of our lives. Number 15, Spartan Ryan writes in a really good one. A lot of you people agreed with this one. Having a competent coaching staff. Spartan Ryan, you mean you didn't like lining up in onside coverage with about seven minutes left in the game, up three against Rutgers as you're watching a 17-point lead in Piscataway dwindle like that? You're... You weren't thrilled with how the Iowa game went last year? No, that, that didn't suit you right? Huh, interesting. So, God, just a whole new coaching staff, top to bottom, outside of Courtney Hawkins. Obviously, he's a holdover from the last staff. But, again, guys, fresh chapter. It's going to be great. Number 16, the player haters ball continues. Uh, C. Evans writes in, no more deep end, woodshed, keep chopping BS. I'll out myself. I'm not going to reverse course here. I, I, I didn't mind. I did not mind the deep end. I did not mind the woodshed because I actually did hear players use the term woodshed before Mel Tucker got here. Like that, that is something that was in the building kind of changed when it got like out to the public, I guess, but nevertheless, I love the deep end. Maybe it's just because that Miami game holds too special of a place in my heart, but I know a lot of you state fans out there wanted nothing to do with all these slogans, all these mantras in the one that I will agree with 
that had to go, that I was so sick of that I almost just threw my coffee mug or my beer mug or the remote or my child, whatever I was holding in my hands during these games, I almost just threw clean through the television when a 10-yard penalty or a 15-yard sportsmanlike conduct penalty happened and you just saw them on the sidelines doing that keep chopping. What are you idiots doing? Get, how, about, how about we try some coaching? Okay, <laughs> let's mix it up here. So Jonathan Smith doesn't seem like a mantra guy. He doesn't seem like a slogan guy. Maybe he'll go to the days of D'Antonio. He'll just say one to start the season, like low ego, high output. He gave that at his press conference. Maybe that's just going to be it for 2024. But, yes, yeah, a lot less marketing. Hopefully a lot more results. We'll have to just wait and see about that. Number 17, Professor. He writes in the onslaught of we're back tweets after MSU beats Florida Atlantic. Yeah, I don't care if it's a three-point win in overtime or a 33-point win in regulation when um, Tommy Schuster is taking the final snaps at quarterback. Whenever that first win is this year, that's going to be, oh, God, a breath of fresh air. That That's going to feel Extra, that will feel like the official start of this next chapter under Jonathan Smith. Ajar Badger writes in, players who know how special teams work. And I, I, I'm i really kicking myself for not just thinking of this one myself. But yes, just new special teams. Of course, we talked about Ryan Neckley. We talked about Jonathan Smith. But as you guys know, we're talking special teams as a whole. I got on this podcast I think at least once, maybe twice, potentially three times. I don't know. The details are very fuzzy. But I begged and pleaded for the special teams coordinator last year, who should go unnamed, to be thrown in jail for how grossly incompetent he was at his job, for stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from the university. If a professor just got up for years at a time, and just mailed it in every single class, didn't even open a textbook, couldn't even find his own lecture hall, again, like the special teams coordinator equivalent did, you would expect him to be run up on fraud charges and spend some time in jail from taking money from a public university. So gone are the days of illegal formations. Gone are the days of sending just 10 guys out on the field. I mean, at least if it does happen, you can count on it to be shored up the next week, and we're not going into week eight, week nine with just the same ridiculous penalties over and over and over and over and over and over and over over again. You could tell I'm I'm, I'm really over last year, right, guys? I'm sure a lot of you are. But, yes, Adjar Badger, players that just know how special teams work. All right, I got three that are completely off the field, guys. Number 18, tailgating. And as the weather eventually gets warmer here in East Lansing, you know, you can really put yourself in the mindset just cracking one open on the parking lot or on the grass and just having a hoot and a half because there's nothing better than a September tailgate and it goes beyond just the weather. Everyone enters week one undefeated. Vibes are high. New quarterback, new offense, new defense. The owls are coming to town. The sun is shining. There is nothing better than that week one tailgate. It is all optimism in the air. And I cannot wait to get back to East Lansing to do a little bit of tailgating. Number 19, let's just keep going down debauchery road here. Number 19, gambling. That's right. At FanDuel, may I add? Let's throw them one more bone here. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. But, oh, man, there's no better sport to bet on than college football. And uh, Lord knows that I need to start making some money back. Uh, March Madness, not so kind to me. The college basketball season as a whole, not so kind to me. And... Unless Brooks Kepka shoots like 13 under in these last five holes that he's playing as we are recording during his round, I'm going to need to make up some money from the Masters too. That's where college football comes to play. That's right. I think I went like 51% last year. So uh, that's, that's in the black. So we're excited to get on the good side of that grid. And then the last thing, number 20, this goes along with everything we've talked about. The new chapter, the new offense, the new players. Gone are the old days and in with the new regime as well as hopefully that September sunshine. I am so excited for in less than 20 weeks to hear that first. It's a beautiful day for football. As 50-50 tickets are spilling out of my pockets as I'm just absolutely dumping beer all over my shirt on accident. Like, oh my God. Guys, I cannot wait to get back out there with all you beautiful people. So, yes, if we missed a glaring one, if we missed one that you think is a little underrated, 
comment below on YouTube or reach out to us locked on Spartans at gmail.com. But guys, we are less than 20 weeks away. That seems so far away, but yet so close. We got this. And then well, throughout the offseason, you know where you could catch us talking MSU football, basketball, and everything in between. Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white. Now go enjoy the rest of your week. Love you all. Go green.